Pietro Belusky, the young architect, the young modernist, um, was given the task of designing this building. My father wanted to do something much more uh, simple, more direct, and more what he felt was an honest direction for the modern era. And interestingly, I think the Board of Trustees at that time was struggling. Do they look back? Do they build a Beaux-Arts type institution, an institution that looks to the history of architecture or going back to European standards and ideas, or do they go forward? And so he wrote a letter to Frank Lloyd Wright, and he took uh, the design uh, that he was working on. And he, he sent him two images. He said one was the image that he really liked to do, and it would move uh, the, his design forward. And the other one was that he knew would get approved by the board, but because that's what they wanted. Frank Lloyd Wright wrote back, said they'd be making a mistake going to the Georgian style. And uh, by taking the design that he had worked on, Frank Lloyd Wright commended it. He said that's the way they should move into the future. And he took that to the board, and, and they basically said, well, if Frank Lloyd Wright approves this and likes, he must be right. Very important moment for this institution, because if you think about it, they committed to building a place for art and culture and education at the height of the Depression. They continued to expand, thanks to Ella Hirsch and her descendants, uh, to build another wing. And this is the wing we have today with the courtyard as well as the Asian galleries. That was a little bit controversial at the time. I mean, Belusky was uh, not only the architect, but as I understand it, he was also chair of the board. There was actually a, quite an interesting disagreement between he and John Yon over whether that wing should be built. John felt that the museum should build upon its collection and not build more buildings, but Belusky was, <laughs> he was a very convincing fellow. And then the Hoffman wing done in the late 60s with uh, his strong design input, that set the stage for not only the strong component in campus for the Museum of Art here, but also people thought about the Portland Art Museum as one of the best small museums in the country. In a way, it put Portland on the map. And I think if you look at a lot of the other buildings, it took a while, but this was emulated around the country. Fast forward to 2005, we completed the Mark Building, and the Mark Building was not only the renovation and expansion of the museum, but the renovation of a Masonic temple from 1927. Mary and I gave the first large amount, so that that got the uh, the ball rolling, and then we had a lot of good people come in, and certainly Harold and Arlene and Laura Meyer and the Jubits. They had uh, ribbon cutting, uh, and they got the key people to participate. For the South Wing in particular, uh, the Jubitz Wing, uh, we essentially had to undermine about a good 20 to 30 feet of that wing in order to install new mechanical spaces to create linkages with the proper art museum. And so anytime you go underground or you go underneath a, a historic structure, for those of us in the business, that's a pretty exciting time. We created beautiful contemporary galleries in the Jubit Center. We also created very important rental spaces for our institution, a wonderful library, as well as office spaces for the museum. Really an opportunity to fulfill the two blocks and over 300,000 square feet of gallery and public amenity space. So I think tying our buildings together is going to be very important. We have two different facilities connected underground, and I think there's opportunity for us to evolve. And it opens up all kinds of possibilities to do something that meld them together even more. That space, which is, you know, in essence public space, should be really thought about as a great opportunity to give the city something. And that evolution, I think, includes greater connectivity, enhanced art viewing experiences, better uh, and more art spaces, as well as investing in public amenities that meet the needs of the 21st century. It's really, really important to think about that connection uh, to the civic realm. All of the programmatic additions that we add creates an environment and a sense of community where people come together, interact with not only art, but with ideas around education, culture, as well as other people in our community. It's a very powerful um, place that we hold in this city, and we need to continue that with our evolution of our facilities.